On today's Toy Spot, we're going to be starting our reviews of the DC Universe. This is DC Universe Classics Wave 12, which is also the wave of uh, figures that collect and connect to build the very large and impressive Dark Side. We're going to be first starting those reviews with Figure 6. We're looking at Mary Batson. Um, the larger, of course, the, the newer, the, the more recent waves of DC Universe have, uh, have all gone with the much larger scale packaging. Uh, so it's kind of rewarding, I think, to go back now and look at some of the older waves uh, where the packaging was nice and small. I still can't figure out why the packaging for the life of me is as large as it is on some of the recent waves of DC Universe Classics. Um, you really only need enough packaging to accommodate both the figure as well as the Collect and Connect piece. Uh, in this case, Mary Batson does come with the upper torso of Dark Side. She also does come with a collector button. We turn the package around. The other figures that make up this wave, we got Eclipso, we got the Spectre, Copperhead, Dr. Midnight, Desaad, Mary Batson, and Iron. Uh, the two variants that make up this series uh, there is a white costumed Mary Batson, which I will review as well. And there is also a glow-in-the-dark Spectre. Now, I didn't pick up the glow-in-the-dark Spectre. I only picked up the original. I, as, as much as I really wanted to, Spot had no interest at all in picking up the glow-in-the-dark Spectre. I was actually much happier just to get the regular version. But you can collect all of them and build this guy right here. Long overdue has it been us waiting for a dark side figure, properly scaled, I think, to the DC Universe. We have the DC Superheroes uh, dark side, but he was much he was much too small, much much too small. Uh, the read up on Mary Batson says, sister of Billy Batson, Mary was raised by a wealthy family in Fawcett City, reuniting with Billy years later when her adoptive parents were kidnapped by the villain Ibac Ibac uh, to save them. Mary, like her brother, was granted miraculous powers by the wizard Shazam, thus transforming her into a slightly older, super-powered version of herself with the same abilities as Billy following the rescue. Mary continued to use her powers alongside Shazam as defenders of Fawcett City. You'll also notice right here that they have put in quotations Shazam as they could not use, unfortunately, Captain, uh, Captain Marvel. Statistics, first appearance, Captain Marvel, speaking of which, Adventures, number 18, December 1942, real name, Mary Batson, occupation, student, base of operations, Fawcett City, special abilities, the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, you know how it goes, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. That, in a nutshell, is Mary Batson. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a break. I'm going to get this opened up. We're going to get a better look at Mary Batson. It's the first figure. First figure of a very long series of reviews where we're going to be looking at uh, DC Universe Wave 12. So there's certainly more to come, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And getting the least interesting aspect out of the way, she does come with a button. She does come with a button. Let's zoom in. Zoom in. We can see that there is Superman. There is also Captain Marvel. I can't for the life of me read what that says. Uh, I think it says Great Scott something. I don't know. Looking off camera here. Uh, no, my, eye, my eyes aren't what they used to be. I can't for the life of me read what that says. Maybe the camera can help us. The beauty of technology. Whoa, let's pan back a little bit. No, the camera's not going to help us. I don't want to spend too much time focusing on a button anyways. It is what it is. DC Comics, 75, 75 years. Perhaps if you are one of those individuals that have a denim jacket or a denim vest, let's not, of course, exclude the denim vest uh, population out there, you could certainly put this on either or and uh, really rock out the bling. Or the pieces of flair. If you are one of those people that have pieces of flair, perhaps the kid next door has... 15 pieces of flair, perhaps this button will 
you know, top the top the scale, and you, my friend, will out flare his pieces of flare. I have no use for these. It's gonna sit off camera. Perhaps I will give it to Rosalita. She is, after all, into buttons and flea markets. She does enjoy her button collection. You know what? Now that I think about it, I am gonna put this aside for Rosalita. Rosalita, this is. I'm hoping she hasn't watched these videos. Rosalita, this is this is for Rosalita. I'm gonna put this to the side right there. The other piece that comes with, not necessarily a piece of flair, but a piece of dark side that comes with Mary Batson is his upper torso. Complete with his man skirt, going on really nice. His nice belt. Uh, dark side certainly is rocking out a serious uh, set of pecs, as you can see here. Also on the back of the belt uh, is his mother box. Now, those have indicated in the past uh, that this is his father box, but uh, if we're predating this figure to prior to 2000, which I like to look at this dark side, or when he eventually gets built, as predating 2000. I want to look at this guy as like mid 80s dark side, uh, then this should be his mother box. Just does peg into the back there, like so. It's not going to really do anything else other than that for the time being. And uh, dark side really isn't not going to do anything for the time being anyways because he has no arms, head, or legs. He doesn't even have his under ruse. He is a shell of a man. Literally, he is a shell. We're just going to put that aside, though. I'm sure he will get progressively better. And let's have a look at Mary Batson. Let's first zoom into her face, because I think one of the, the main problems that a lot of people had with this figure was her face. I don't mind it so much. Um, I think the hair certainly balances out to perhaps probably a, a weak face. Um... It has personality. It's not your standard variety of uh, DC Universe style women. Because usually the women from DC Universe uh, have much slender faces. You know, they're they're much prettier. I think Mary Batson is kind of like that girl next door. She would babysit you, maybe work on her schoolwork. And then you'd be peeking out of your bedroom looking over at her thinking, Oh my god, if if only she put a little bit of makeup on... I bet you she could be really hot. And I think that might be the case here with Mary Batson here. If she just put on a little bit of rouge, a little bit of eyeshadow, Mary Batson could be a little little hotter than what she is right now. Um, as a figure, though, I've never really been into the Shazam family, as it were. The many different members of the Shazam Captain Marvel family. There are a lot of people out there that do like that, uh, like reading those comics. So Mary Batson, by by no means, you know, is a no-brainer. I think to pick up if you, of course, already have the Captain Marvel. Um, she does have a nice bright red costume, accented, of course, by this really nice bright yellow. She's got your typical Captain Marvel Shazam-style cape draped over to the one side. That's how they rock it out. Some nice decoration going on there as well. Um, I really can't find too much fault with the figure. It's it's a bland figure, but in, in Spot's opinion, it's a bit of a bland character too. Um, one thing I I do want to comment on is the, uh, the fragileness of what appears to be her arms. Um, usually, I've criticized in the past that these biceps on the female figures are incredibly small and and very fragile even in the elbow area it seems to me like Marvel or Marvel instead of Mattel <laughs> improving uh, they've now opted to give Mary Batson very small arms now luckily being the fact that her arms peg into a sleeve rather than just a shoulder. It does a lot for the fact that there is a larger connector point from the elb, from the uh, the bicep area to the, the shoulder. If this wasn't sleeved, um, you would have a very, very small peg on there, and this arm would be of, of some concern. I am a little concerned, though, with the elbow. The elbow does seem very small, and uh, I don't know, in time, this could get really flimsy. Who's to say? Perhaps Spock really shouldn't be playing with it. It not helping the cause at all. Uh, but in the way of her articulation, Mary Batson does have a ball joint. 
Although you would not think that she does have a ball joint because her head really only goes to the one side and then and then the front. I mean, her hair, uh, coupled with the cape, really prevents her from doing anything other than looking to the side and looking to the front. You can't even really move the head up and down either. Uh, the shoulders, however, are on a pin and socket. The arms will move out. They will rotate. It's a little stiff on this particular figure. As I already mentioned, the bicep uh, rotates. There's a bend at the elbow. There's also a rotation in her very small, small hands. There's a swivel in her waist. Now, despite the fact that she's got a, uh, a skirt on, um, her legs do bend forward slightly, back slightly, and uh, there really is not not a lot of movement in and out. Uh, basically, just because this the skirt does hinder a lot of it. There is still a rotation in the thigh, there is still a bend at the knee, and there is still a rotation in the boot as well as in the foot. There is a pivot. Uh, unfortunately, it's really hard to rate a figure such as this, uh, namely because I don't follow the Captain Marvel universe aside from really following Captain Marvel with whatever appearances he's had in like Justice League uh, or when he's uh, you know, uh, fought Superman in one way or another. Um, but I'm sure really anybody who's into the Marvel Universe or the the Captain Marvel Universe uh, would likely enjoy Mary Batson. But it's unfortunate that the problem with a lot of DC Universe figures, there are really some figures that are good for collectors who follow it. For the rest of the collectors, a lot of figures may be a pass. And I would probably think that Mary Batson could be a pass for uh, a lot of collectors out there unless you know the material. I don't really know the material, but I think based on a sculpt and the paint of her, um, I think she still works well. It's not a figure I would have gone out of my way to pick up, but I think the figure still works pretty good. Uh, Mary Batson, I'm going to give a 7 to right there. Um, and uh, I would say uh, really probably something only that a true Captain Marvel fan would likely pick up and you probably would have her standing next to uh, Billy but at any rate though today's toy spot maybe not the best way to start I'm sorry uh, but we were looking at uh, Mary Batson now this was the red costume Mary Batson I still want to do the white and I'll do the comparison between the two so if you guys have enjoyed this review as much as you have <laughs> You can still look forward to the variant of her as well coming up. Um, but uh, not necessarily the best way to start, but we were starting our reviews of the DC Universe Wave 12, and we were looking at Mary Batson. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.